watching Today with Marilyn and Sarah. I read this testimony and I want to encourage you with this from Linda. Linda called our prayer center to ask that we would pray for her to receive wisdom. And I want to say this, every single person watching, you and me, we need wisdom. We need wisdom in all kinds of areas. We need wisdom in our marriages. We need wisdom in our finances. We need wisdom in our decision making. We need wisdom with our kids, with our, our husbands, with our wives. We need wisdom straight across the board. You need wisdom and I need wisdom. So Linda called. We prayed for her to receive wisdom. And here's the deal. She needed wisdom for her three job interviews that particular day. One of the interviews included an assessment for her skills. And she asked for wisdom for the assessment, of course. So that's like a test. Give me wisdom for this test. All three potential employers called her after the test and offered her a second round of interviews because God gave her wisdom with that test. So I just encourage you today, you're watching and I'll bet you can identify at least three areas where you need wisdom. Hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you that God would give you and identify those three areas. You're like, well, I need wisdom with my health. I need wisdom on a decision. I need wisdom in my finances, whatever it is, those three things we want to pray for you. And we know, we know just like Linda, God answers prayer and gives us wisdom. Mom, we right. need wisdom all over the place. Well, and he said he'll give you abundant wisdom and we will have abundant wisdom inviting this Yay, guest. Oh, Anna, Anna, Yay, Honor. Yay, Honor with the me. Sears Path. Woo, woo. <laughs> Sweet. Yes, and I'm so excited because I think so many of us don't understand what a seer is. And I see a lot more prophecy you know, and you know, where we exhort, edify, you know, we build up. But also I see more prophets in full-time ministry, but seer, tell us the difference again, because I think that's very important. You have it in your book, but please tell our audience. But even before you do that, not everybody knows who you are, right? Oh, sorry. So let's, let's, cause we have the chance off exactly. camera. Exactly. You don't sorry, get to sorry. have that privilege, but tell us a little bit of your background. So everybody's kind of like familiar, yeah. um, and not just you wrote this cool book, but it helps us understand, kind of appreciate who you are. And then we can like get your book. Cause that's super exciting. So yeah. give us some background. Oh, I'm Anna. Um, I've been married for six years, going on seven now. And I have two children, um, 15 month year old son and a daughter who's three and a half. And my husband and me now reside in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, I'm originally from California and we are the associate directors of healing rooms. So we do healing ministry all the time <laughs> and we nice. love it. We love it, love it, love it. So that's a little bit about my background and where I'm from. And Nice, yeah. nice. And then, Go back yes. to yeah, tell us. No, <laughs> sorry, you. I interrupted. Well, you know, we're a mother daughter. We know how to do things together. We're kind of the hand in the glove here. Mm -hmm. But I like this especially because I don't think in this day we understand what a seer is. I mean, what is that? And really, what is a full time prophet? A lot of you think, oh, is this kooky spooky? This is not kooky spooky. This is biblical. And so when Anna shares in this book and shares today, you know, angelic visitations, I don't want you to get nervous. I want you to know that Sarah and I have confidence in this ministry and have, con I certainly, I've read through this book and seeing how angelic visitors work in our lives and ranks of them is awesome. So share some of the things of your angelic visitations into some very dangerous situations. Yeah. Um, so a seer, you had asked me what a seer is. A right. seer is a person, a seer isn't a made up term. It's in the Bible actually, but a seer would get discernment from the Lord through the gift of sight. Um, so similar to a prophet, they will prophesy, but it's through mostly the gift of sight that they receive wisdom. So prophets might hear from the Lord where the seer sees. Same, That's good. Same nice. thing though. Same offering, prophecy, discernment, same thing. Right on. Um, but yeah, I have had a lot of angelic encounters. I was in um, Brazil and I was in the drug trafficking slums. One time I got really lost and, and I was like, God, save me. <laughs> Please save me. And um, an angel showed up and he was on, like, the Lord said, look up, Anna. And I just looked up and I saw an angel at the very end of the block and the angel smiled and he just waved to me like this and dropped a flower, like a physical flower on the ground and then just took off down the corner. 
And because the slums, how they go are like zigzaggy, like that. So I just, Doop. so I thought, well, I have no better other option right now. I had men approaching me that had guns in their arms. So, I mean, what else do I do but chase this angel? So I went and picked up the flower, and then I looked around the next corner, and there he was at the very next corner. And he just smiled, waved, dropped the flower. And this kept going on for an hour and a half of chasing this angel. And then finally, the very last flower he dropped was on my doorstep back where I was residing at the time. Isn't that crazy? And I have that flower in one of my journals, like my press journal from Brazil. So. Wow. Awesome, awesome. And you know, you may be saying, well, I wonder if I've ever had any angelic visitations. And of course, we see different ranks of angels, but you also were caught up into rooms in heaven mm -hmm. showing angels and angelic activity. I would like for you to share that. Yeah, I get to go to heaven often, which is wonderful. <laughs> God's blessed me in that. And um, one time I went to a room where, well, first I was walking down a corridor and there was a door and Jesus pointed to it. And so I knew that's where he had for me to go. And so I went into this room and I saw angels just bustling about the room and they were really busy. And I just watched, you know, like what's happening? You know, I just try and watch everything when I get to go to heaven. And I saw them going to, there's all these shelves um, from floor to ceiling, there were shelves and all these little jars that were there and baskets. Some of them were jars, some of them were baskets and they were getting things out of it and the Lord would look at them. The Lord was in the very center of the room and he would like nod or indicate something to them. But I would see this transaction happening back and forth and then they would just zoom, zip off to earth down below and I could see the earth down below and take those things. And then I asked the Lord, well, what is this? And they said, and Jesus said, this is the um, answer to my saints' prayers. And they were releasing the answers to prayers. Isn't that amazing? Awesome. Awesome. You know, you may be watching right now and you have some things you need answers for. You might need answers for healing. You might need answer for financial um, issues. You might need answers for relationship questions. You might need answers for internal issues. Maybe you have kind of some questions, some confusion, maybe even some depression. And we would love to pray for you. Hop on the phone, get on the website. It's a great opportunity for us to pray and see angels bring you those answers and provisions and solutions. And while you're on the phone, Phone, grab your copy of The Seer's Path, super great book. And one of the things that's helpful in this book is it's got questions at the end of every chapter, discussion questions. Mm -hmm. So you can do it in a small group. That's phenomenal, like Sunday school class, a book club, whatever. And there's also activation prayer at the end of every chapter. And I love that because sometimes I don't know how to pray. You know, I'll read a chapter and be like, wow, that just, <laughs> that blew my mind. And the prayer helps me because it's like, I don't know how to put that into words, but that kind of, these prayers at the end are super, super helpful. So grab your copy and this would be a great gift. Super excellent gift for uh, friends that you know, book club, all that, but really helpful. And, you know, Anna too, the other thing I want to ask, and you've talked about this a little bit, is, you know, your mom, when you were five and you saw the angel and came in your room mm -hmm. and played and all that stuff, and your mom didn't be like, oh, well, you know, that's so nice and sweet, and, you know, just kind of dismiss, dismiss that. How did your mom cultivate some of that gift of seeing? Yeah, she, my mom, She's an incredible woman, but she was already a seer. Um, and so when I approached her and I said, I saw this angel and, you know, and I told her the whole thing, I was only five, but she didn't dismiss it. I think as parents, it's so important for us to not dismiss some of the experiences that our kids have. Right. You know, I know my daughter's had supernatural encounters already and she's three and a half. So when she has those and she tells me about them and she'll say, oh, I saw this and this and this. I'm like, well, tell me more. You know, I'm always like, can you come? And we've, I've already cultivated this in her. I train her, come pray for me. Right. Come pray for me. Like the other day, my neck was hurting and I said, honey, come pray for, lay hands on me. And she prayed for me. Jesus, she said, may God help you feel better. Heal mommy's neck. And literally it was gone like mm -hmm. that. My neck was healed. So kids, we can train them at a young age as parents. We have to train them to move in the gifts of the supernatural, right. but not to dismiss them. Right. The other thing too, I think sometimes we have this idea that I'm too old, right? Some people are watching right now saying, I'm too old to move in the gifts, mm -hmm. you know, and, and they feel like that boat sailed. What would you say to somebody like that? 
No, it hasn't sailed. <laughs> it hasn't sailed. I, you know, God wants it. Moving in the gifts of the supernatural, it's all about intimacy with Him. Really, it comes down to that. So I just encourage everybody, you can too move in the gifts of the supernatural. It's for everybody. It really right. is. And you speak to that in your book, the first, very first chapter, that you give descriptions as far as uh, things that are going to help, help you facilitate that the gifts and flowing and seeing God move. And, and you say it like in pages 18, I love this, 18, 19, 20, things, tips into seeing in the spirit, get into his presence, keep your eyes pure, intimacy, get intimate, glimpses, keep asking, write it down. It's just really, really good practical, like how to do this and how to facilitate mm -hmm. it, accommodate and grow. Mm -hmm. yeah. there, I mean, it's very practical. Mm -hmm. It's just practical things, but that, that I've done over the years, you know, my journal, if you would look at it, it literally says, I saw, I felt, I sensed, you know, I heard, you know, I'm very sensitive to the spirit, but I incorporate all my senses. So it's like practical tools in when you're sensing the Lord, don't just overlook it. We forget in an instant, we'll be like, oh, God was there, but you know, Later that day, we'll forget it. Right. Um, you know, we'll forget that prophetic word that was released to us or something. So it's good to write it down, but practically just to um, always, you know, grow in the gift. There's tools that you can do that I write about. You get in the word, you get in the Holy Spirit, you start living in the supernatural. And I experienced, um, what can I say, angels giving me comfort. So the night my father died, I awakened at three in the morning and I thought he didn't really die. And there were angels standing at the dresser and warmth was coming out of them. You know, these are guardian, wonderful angels. We'll be right back. Just beyond what your eyes can see is a very real spirit world. For your gift of $25 or more, we'll send you Anna Werner's book, The Seer's Path, through an engaging blend of supernatural stories, including encounters with Jesus, experiences in heaven, and practical spiritual truths, Anna releases a powerful message that will help you start seeing into the spirit realm. This book will help you gain essential tools for engaging in victorious spiritual warfare, unique insights into the workings of angels and demons, insider glimpses into the rooms of heaven and the realms of God's glory. We will also send you Marilyn's CD, Supernatural Strategy. This teaching walks you through the Word of God and teaches you how to be successful. You'll be encouraged to open your Bible and read God's plan for you and see that God's Word has all the strategies you'll ever need. Learn to see into the supernatural world and experience the wonders of heaven in your life today. Call or click today for this valuable resource. probably say, well, I've never seen a program like this, but it, there is no question this is biblical. This is the dimension of the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the Word. And I shared how angels ministered to me the night of my father's death. And I remember they just comforted me. And at my father's funeral, you know, I had comfort. But the unique thing about this, Anna, this is so key, a year later to the date, I was in Hawaii on business and I had the same angelic visitation with comfort. Wow. So I think, you know, there are experiences that there shows us that there are various rooms in heaven where he has special angelic beings that have special purposes. 
And I really encourage you, of course, to call in your prayer request, but also to get the book. And partners, there are books that you especially need, and you need to get more than one, books or missionaries. This will encourage people's faith in the supernatural with the word, not goofy kooky, you know. So don't get one book, get two or three. Pass it on. It's wonderful what God can do. Now share with us some of the rooms that you experienced angelic activity. And of course, this would go with Psalm 103. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one room in particular I've been to, I mean, I, I don't know if this is what God calls it. I just call it the room of lavishing okay. love. I don't know if that's what he calls it per se, but um, God took me to this room and it was, it was incredible, really. There was just, I walked in and there was just water dripping everywhere. Not just how you would naturally see it, like, you know, on the floor, but it was like the walls, it was like the walls were crawling with water and the ceiling was dripping with water. It was more like honey, just dripping everywhere. And it was, you know, a couple of feet deep. And so I got to go in and I was like trudging through it, you know, and I could feel um, the water felt alive as well. I know somebody's listening to this and going, okay, this lady's off the chart crazy, but God was in it, I'm telling you. Um, there was a sink in the middle of the room. I could see a faucet there and, I, and it was just pouring and pouring and pouring out the water. And I went to turn it off because, you know, I'm just like, Who's, why is this water being wasted? <laughs> so I went to turn it off and I couldn't. And God said, you can't turn that off. I heard his voice say, Anna, you can't turn that off. This is my lavishing love. You cannot turn it off ever. And then when I knew it was that, I was like, I I want to swim in it. Can I swim in it? Gosh. Sure. So I got to swim in it, but I could see angels all moving around that room as well. Um, and I just, just got to experience, got filled up with the love of Christ. It was incredible, really. You know, Sarah, I, that fits Ezekiel 47 when he takes mm -hmm. him to walk in the water. At first, he just kind of wades in it. We start wading in his love. W-A-D-I-N-G. Mm -hmm. You know, when we first get born again, we think, oh my goodness, he loves me. But the more we walk with him, then it said the water came up to the knees. Then it said the water came up to the waist. And then the water came over his head. He could swim in it. Mm -hmm. And I think as we walk with God, we experience his different levels of love mm -hmm. until I know now I think, God, you're just too good to be true. And that lavish love, that's very key in the book. And some of you out there, I think you don't realize how much he loves you. And you don't realize how angels are sent to help you. And you don't realize the ranks of angels. This would be an excellent book for you. But of course, call in with your prayer request. But get two or three of the books. Pass them on. You give people flowers, they will. Give them candy, make them fat. Give them God's word, change their lives. You know, I want to minister briefly on that idea of love because that's such an essential um, need for us. It's hardwired into us. Mm -hmm. We need love. And God wired that into us because God's the answer to that need. And we, if we don't have the need for love, then why do we need God, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So some of you watching right now, you, you are struggling. There's this gap and you've been looking for love in all the wrong places. I know that's like so cheeky and like cheesy. Why would I say that? But here's the deal. I want to minister to you Romans 5 verse 5. And it says the love of God has been poured out within our hearts mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit given to us. And for some of you watching right now, I'm just going to take a moment and pray for you mm -hmm. that you would, that love of God poured into your heart. And what happens is it's a state of being and not just a one-time experience. You've had brushes and tastes and glimmers of that genuine love, the Holy Spirit, but God wants to lock this into you as a state of being. So Father, I pray right now for each person watching that is struggling with love. Um, some individuals have gone from relationship to relationship. Some of indi individuals have looked for love from achievements, validation. And I ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would pour your love into their hearts now that would immunize them from these insecurities and from these rabbit trails, diversions. Mm. I pray that you would be the source of that search for love and they would reach out to you and know that love and let that be permanent and not just kind of a, a fading memory. Thank you for pouring your love into their hearts now in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Now I just encourage you, hop on the phone. We want to hear from you what God is showing you. Get on the website. And when you do that, um, grab this book, The Seer's Path. And one of the chapters in here speaks about love. Is this last chapter 15, the room of his lavishing love. <laughs> and what you're experiencing and, and that sense that you have, um, this chapter will really help lock that in. So make sure you grab a couple of copies. It'll be super, super helpful. And what do you sense as far as, as God speaking to you from this room of lavishing? love. What were some of the takeaways? Um, for me personally, mm. I felt like I can't ever go deep enough in it. It's like, it's like I would get and, you know, go like you were mentioning ankle deep and then I would go deeper and deeper and deeper. And it couldn't, I couldn't stop the love and I couldn't also um, get enough. You know, it was like the more I wanted, the more I could have the more that was accessible for me wow. when I was in that room. And it's not the first time I've gotten to go back, to be honest. I always ask Jesus before I leave room, can I come back please? Mm. <laughs> and he said, of course. And so every time I get to go back, I get more and more of that, you know. We, we hunger, the more, more we hunger for God, the more he meets us, Right. you know. So it's, that's what I, my biggest take on it is just hunger, hunger for him. Mm -hmm. He'll meet you. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we, we feel ourselves, we, there's, there's intrinsically hunger in us, right? We're hungry, we want, mm -hmm. but we fill ourselves with all kinds of stuff. You know, we keep ourselves busy, occupied with our Facebook and, you know, all these success, you know, stuff. But I don't think we really rip, the, rip that to the core and say, what I'm really hungry for is Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Relationship with mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. Intimacy mm -hmm. with him, mm -hmm. you know. And that is so key because you tell us in here about how to just wait in his presence mm -hmm. and how to write down your experiences. I think it's very hard for us in this day to be still and get our minds still. And so I know I practiced this last night too because I read the instructions and I thought, Lord, I, I want to be more sensitive to your voice. Now, the Lord did something to me that's kind of unusual for me. I drive to church every day, mm -hmm. you know, to the office when I'm home. And he pointed out a building, a new building they're building. And he said, that's your building. Wow. And I said, that's my building? He said, yes. You're to pray over the workers that they get saved. And you're to pray over the people who are going to inhabit the building and the maintenance people. So every time you go by, remember, that's your appointment. And those are the kind of things that, you know, they're just so sweet to you. And the Lord wants to talk to you in a sweet way, direct you, even his correction, even his correction. Because he talked to me the other day and said, you need to repent of some pride issues. And I want to say, who, me? That must be Sarah, not me. <laughs> but it was me. Even his correction is sweet. Mm -hmm. So just share us quickly with us quickly in the wrap up why they need to get the book. You know, why do they need it? Everyone longs for supernatural encounters, but like I said, it's really about going in deep with him. It's about Jesus, mm -hmm. right? But I wanted to give practical tools for people in what I've done over the years to be able to grow in seeing, so. And see, you need to get the book, of course, but you need to call us with prayer requests because mm -hmm. some of you, you are so hurting and I know about grief and sorrow. I lost my husband, but Jesus carried my griefs and sorrows. So why not let him carry you through the things that you're involved in? He'll pick you up and he'll carry you through and you will win. Just beyond what your eyes can see is a very real spirit world. For your gift of $25 or more, we'll send you Anna Werner's book, The Seer's Path. Through an engaging blend of supernatural stories, including encounters with Jesus, experiences in heaven, and practical spiritual truths, Anna releases a powerful message that will help you start seeing into the spirit realm. This book will help you gain essential tools for engaging in victorious spiritual warfare, unique insights into the workings of angels and demons, insider glimpses into the rooms of heaven and the realms of God's glory. We will also send you Marilyn CD, Supernatural Strategy. This teaching walks you through the Word of God and teaches you how to be successful. 
you'll be encouraged to open your Bible and read God's plan for you and see that God's Word has all the strategies you'll ever need. Learn to see into the supernatural world and experience the wonders of heaven in your life today. Call or click today for this valuable resource. absolutely been so wonderful, Anna, to have you uh, on this program with us. We were just talking off camera, um, something the Holy Spirit dropped in your heart to pray for our audience as we finish here. So would you go ahead and minister that? Yeah, um, I just felt, I'm just going to pray. Lord, I just pray right now. Um, I just sense that somebody who's watching this has uh, hope deferred on them. There's something they've been hoping and praying for for years that hasn't come to pass yet and it's discouragement has really set in. So Father, I just pray for discouragement to just break off of that person right now in Jesus name. A spirit of discouragement, we just say, go right now. Lord, I pray, just hope arise. Let hope arise that the promises that you have given your people are yes and amen that they are to come, Father. Jesus, I pray for somebody who's got, it's specific about healing. They've been contending for healing in their body for years and it just hasn't come yet. Father, I pray for that person. Let hope arise, hope arise, that healing is for them today as they're watching this. Jesus, I just pray over everybody that you would open their eyes to see you more and more that you would open all their senses to catch what your Holy Spirit is doing, the wind of your spirit. Would you come today and minister to each one of us today? In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. This is so wonderful. There's such a presence of the Lord here in our studio today, and I believe that presence is just coming right out of the screen into your heart, into your life, into your circumstances. Mm -hmm. And folks, we need to live in this world. Of course, we know the dimensions of it, but there's also a supernatural dimension. Don't miss that God has made us supernatural for you because He loves you. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We're so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So of course, you gotta hit the subscribe button because we wanna continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience and when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.